meeting at 702. Um, I will go from the order for the roll call. Um, William Collins? Yep. Ken Dickerson? Present. Brett Gagnon? Present. Jennifer Parkhurst? Present. Jake Morin's here? Elvis? Here. And myself, Randy Brownrigg. Um, next, we do the Pledge of Allegiance. Jen, do you want to lead us in the pledge? Absolutely. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next is um, alternates. Um, wait, I need someone to take notes tonight. I got. Oh, you're going to take notes? Covered. Just mm -hmm. to let you know, um, Paul Hewitt is excused mm -hmm. and Elliot is also excused. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we will, Ms. Parkhurst will be the alternate a member tonight. Sitting for what? Sitting for um, Elliot, Velo Elliot Velasa. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, just a couple of things, just to let you all know, we're going to switch a couple of things around uh, on your uh, agenda. It says update Amara Park. That's going to be deferred to next month. Um, we're going to move um, a new business A and B up to first, so those gentlemen can get a, um, get moving. So let's call up the wetland and special inception application for Ferris Drive. Mr. Um, Mr. Yes, Chairman, sir. I would ask that we do the Boy Scouts first, so they can get in and get out. Okay. All right. We'll do the on um, Joe, Mr. Uppercourt. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> it's your, it's your kick. Um, ben Romack, 32 Biscayne Park, Brand Nashville. Mm -hmm. yeah. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Go ahead and you can read your, your speech. Um, <laughs> my name is Ben Romack. I'm a member of Troop 20 working on my EO project. I'm here to request permission to build bridges on the Hamlet Nash Trail at the Musquash Pond Conservation Area. I have talked to Joe Undercoffler, and we have identified two locations that have water obstructions on the trail. I will be responsible for all fundraising and the production of the bridges. The town of Hudson will have no financial responsibility for the project whatsoever. The bridges will be 32 inches wide, 12 feet long, and 10 to 12 inches long, tall. They will be made out of pressure treated lumber screwed together with decking screws. They will be placed on deck pavers provide stability and keep them level. I'm expecting to have the bridges completed and installed by spring. That's fantastic. So it's going to be two bridges, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I think we already know where the bridges are at uh, on Musquash, right? This is down on the Woodland Drive the side. Woodland mm -hmm. Drive. Right, right. Okay. Well, I really don't have any questions, not unless the committee has any questions or thoughts. Or yes, Mr. Gagnon. Uh, just for quick clarification, I do remember one stream crossing you said there's two bridges, correct? And so if you come down that steep incline and you go to the right, I believe there's one one crossing, which that's great. Where was the second one? The second one is a little further down where there's the two gigantic trees. Where the gate is. That's what I thought. Okay. And I guess to, to follow up on that, um, any concerns from either of you about that location because of potential heavy traffic or different types of traffic? That's a fairly large span, isn't it? No, that one's not where we where it will go is it's not bad it's kind of near where those logs were dropped mm -hmm. got it got it got it got it okay and so there's there's no potential for for maybe damage no. from vehicles no okay good 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 mr dickerson well i was just thinking for clarification it's uphill from where it's all washed out basically so you're going to try to cross up a narrow spot um, basically where we had put that temporary trail mm -hmm. oh. plus or minus say 10 feet from that okay yeah so that makes it better because they can use the embankment to their advantage yeah. we've been down there yep yeah that's great that's, that's awesome that's why we did it miss parkas any questions no i just want to thank you very much for um stepping up and doing this for your community i think it's going to be very valuable um and i look forward to its completion i'll have to um make sure we get out there and check out your work <laughs> appreciate it thank you. all right thank you very much guys appreciate thank you. it have a good night Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. you. Okay. Um, you guys are up. Introduce yourselves. Uh, Ferris Drive. Ferris Drive, yep.
for the record, you guys introduce yourselves, um, your business, and your names. Sure. Please. Thank you very much. My name is Thomas J. Leonard. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, uh, Dakota Partners, and I'm here with uh, uh, Mark Pilot, who is the representative or the 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 uh, applicant, and Carl Dubay, who is the engineer in the in the project. And uh, I can take a minute. So. I think you have, I see up on the, on the screen that we have uh, uh, some information and that's, uh, that's good. So let me first off say that we're here for a special, well, we're here for um, your recommendation regarding a special exception, which uh, we have made an application to the Zoning Board of Adjustment and expect to be heard on that matter later this week, uh, I think it's the 24th. Um, we have already been before the planning board for this for review of this particular uh, application and the planning board has conceptually uh, supported the application um, you may also remember that we were here bef before this group uh, probably two three months ago um, and our request was uh, very similar but this is an independent request. So this is not an amendment to that. It's totally independent. It's kind of the next step, if you will. Um, so let me take a moment and, and explain a little bit how this differs from the original one. Um, our proposal, and you can see, uh, well, before we get to the impacts, let me give you an overview. The, essentially what we're talking about is expanding Friars Drive. So it's the same area um, Friars Drive, as you may remember, is an existing uh, road. There's an existing crossing, um, and we had come in an initially requesting a 24 feet of, uh, of, of road construction, basically. not the, the pavement was actually 24 feet. Um, right now, it's probably 18 to 20 feet. It varies. And all of this was as a result of uh, discussions with the planning staff and the engineering staff and in support of the Dakota Partners uh, multifamily, um, and, and by the way, let me also say I have Luke Hurley. Hi. Luke Hurley is the <laughs> wetland scientist who's involved in this project and is uh, very familiar with the site, obviously. So we were looking for 24 feet, and that was our uh, presentation the last time around. It was a kind of a simple uh, box improvement at the suggestion of staff. It was what was necessary for the multifamily project. Um, and uh, kind of the, the summary of that was that um, we were doing some minor improvements, a little bit of grading. There's no work uh, in a 24 feet proposal. There was no work being done in wetlands, no crossings, um, et cetera. It was all work in the buffer, really grading and, uh, and some drainage work. Um, what we're here today for is through that whole process of review with the planning board and, and the staff and the engineering office, the suggestion was that for, in order to be prepared for the back piece, uh, it's really appropriate and necessary to have a 32-foot road. So the 32-foot road is the, it would be the extension of the existing road. So right now, Friars Drive exists, uh, as, as you know, and uh, that 32 feet is the is an extension of the of the uh, the size, and that's necessary for the uh, initial development or initial use of the remaining piece. In other words, the piece of land which is not the multifamily development. So that's what we're here for today. Yes. And also, it's worth mentioning that for residential, the minimum width is 24 feet for the road. And when it comes to industrial or commercial, it's 32. And that's what the trigger is between residential was as 24 and now a potential for 32 because the back piece will be anything but residential if it comes to it. That's right. The, uh, the front piece, which the Dakota Properties is developing is in the B zone and it's multifamily residential. The back piece is in the G zone, which is not uh, gonna be residential. <coughs> Um, the, the plan that we just passed around um, is the plan that you also have on the screen. And what it does is it shows the difference between the two uh, impacts. 
and the the top portion is the new impact and the bottom portion is the old impact impact um, but the primary difference is that the road uh, will be widened to 32 feet um, there is some improvement in the drainage system so you may remember that the drainage systems for the 20 four feet that you approved was really uh, kind of sheet flow, not a whole lot of um, complicated drainage. Um, the new request asks for, you, there's a, a larger uh, detention pond, which is actually to the north of Friar Drive. And I should say it's still, it, it, it's still true that we are using and reconstructing the Friars Drive. And it is still true that we are not um, moving into any wetlands whatsoever. So the general statement of earlier uh, application that there's no impact to the wetland, that continues to be true. It, it also continues to be true that the function of the wetlands uh, remains the same both before and after. There's no adverse impact to the function of the wetlands. There's no adverse impact to the value of the wetlands. And that's as per the wetland scientist and his uh, assessment of the, of the impact. But you can see in the plan that I'm showing you or that is on the screen, the top, as I say, the top uh, part of that picture is the present proposal. And the, the impact to the buffer areas is slightly greater. And it's primarily in the area of the, what I'm gonna call a detention pond or a detention basin or a, or a basin uh, to the north of Friar Drive which is actually to the right side of your plan and, and to the below the road. And that you can see has been, uh, for lack of a more technical term, beefed up a little bit. And there's, what has happened is that uh, Carl Dubay and his office have collected the runoff from the pavement and they are treating it um, in, a, in a more complete way before it gets uh, handled and, and discharged over toward the wetland, which is to the south of that road or to the top of the page. So you'll see the uh, basins. There's a basin on the right side, and then there's a newer basin uh, kind of in the middle of the road as well. Um, and both of those have uh, uh, pipe, et cetera. And that's the, the difference in the impact is primarily associated with that uh, improved and upgraded uh, drainage. Um, as you know, in the wetlands, or in the Wetland Conservation District, there's uses that are permitted by special exception, and the ones that are are drainage ways, swales, culverts, uh, detention basins, and then, of course, grading, etc. And then roads designed and built in such a fashion as to minimize the impacts to the wetlands. Uh, this has been designed to minimize the impacts to the wetlands. There is actually no impact to the wetland, according to our wetland scientists. But we've also uh, worked hard to, at the very, so if you look at that plan there to the left, which is actually the south uh, east corner of the property, there's a new area of work in the buffer. Again, that's not in the wetland, but that's just more treatment uh, before the water gets to the wetland. And again, that's an improvement uh, that Mr. Dubay could certainly talk about uh, if necessary. Um, but I think that we fit within the permitted uses. Um, it is very clear that there is uh, no work in the wetlands themselves, and uh, we can support that. Uh, you know, uh, Luke can talk about that more if, if you'd like. Um, I think that it's probably worth noting, if, if you don't mind, uh, mm -hmm. Elvis, the next, I think, 10 pictures, actually going back before that one there, yeah. So they, as you can see, I don't know, we, you did a site walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone was out and, and saw everything. Um, this is the, it's, presently it's exactly the same as, as what you saw the last time you saw the site walk. So there's no real difference. It varies in about 18 to 20 feet, depending on where you are. It's a raised uh, bed. It is going to get reconstructed. Um, there's not a whole lot of widening going on, except 
to maintain that 32 foot uh, road. So there are some shoulders. There is a sidewalk on the north side, uh, which will connect the Friars Drive area with the new residential um, development. But it's not, um, it, it's not a whole new reconstruction in the sense of a major new road. We, as I say, the, the actual crossing to the wetland is presently existing. Um, and that is not enlarged uh, uh, in any fashion. Um, primary reason, oh, if you go back one little step, you can see kind of an overview of, on the GIS map, where the impacts are. And it kind of makes sense. Uh, so as you look at that, uh, this is facing, so the top of that page is north. Um, and the left side is the industrial park. The right side along Lowell Road would be where the Dakota Properties uh, multifamily development is. Uh, and you can see that the impacts are right along the existing Friars Drive primarily. The one exception is that little area to the right side just <coughs> along uh, Lowell Road, and that's the area that I talked about where we have a new treatment swale uh, outside of the wetland but in the buffer area. That, by the way, is about 15 or uh, 1,600 square feet. Um, I think that's really, uh, we, the last time we were here, uh, there were questions about whether we would proceed with best uh, management and best practices for um, uh, the whole project. And yes, we do intend to comply with that. I think the term that you used last time was best practices to control non-point source pollution. Mm -hmm. We obviously agree to that. Um, th we also will be proceeding on with you know in compliance with and in accordance with all the requirements uh, for the state uh, regarding erosion and all of that uh, those rules and regulations um, and I think uh, unless somebody has some questions I, I know you know so much from the last time as well it's really a very similar project and it's just necessary for um, Good planning is what it amounts to. I think you'll see in your file uh, there's a letter or a, a memo from Brian Groth where he originally stated that it was uh, uh, essential to developing the rear industrial piece uh, to get this up to 32 feet. Um, yeah, I have yes. a question. Is it really necessary to go from 24 to 32 feet? Is it really necessary? To yes, it is, and it's it's essential. It's um, so. It is definitely necessary. I think even the uh, town planner, Brian Growth, agrees with that. Certainly uh, Elvis can speak for himself, but I think he agrees with that. Um, this is a large tract of land. And part of what uh, the planning staff wants is they want, so this all came from um, a planning goal to eliminate a left turn from Lowell Road. Uh, so as you go north, the planning staff thought that it was important to avoid a left turn going uh, into the uh, residential project. In order to accommodate that, they needed to get a through road uh, into Friar Drive. Now, Friar Drive, the through road existed, but it needed to get reconstructed to standards. So the first step was con uh, constructing it to town standards for a residential road, but of course, there's 80 plus acres that remain, or in about 80 plus, in about 80 acres that remain that are industrial, and that requires the 32 feet. There will be other road system uh, within that 80 acres, but this uh, this is the start. The other thing that uh, Carl has done is he's constructed it with a plan toward the uh, the future, so that there's actually a stub that re doesn't require any further crossings. Um, so you'll see in the plan. Um, you can see at the top sheet of that uh, plan, sh the plan we had earlier, there's, there's actually a stub that takes you between two drainage areas, and it's intended to be uh, the next access to the balance of the property. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just jump in real quick to kind of <coughs> summarize this. So as we said earlier, the front is residential, the back is industrial commercial. So it is required by our rules 
right? The residential would be 24, and the rest would be 32. So they would be required if they develop the area in the back. What they're trying to do is before they commit, the owner and the investor right now, they want to make sure that this road can be built at 32 feet. And that's why they're asking right. for that, because they want to make sure that can be done. The intent here is if they're going to build the road, and this was a lot of discussions back and forth with town staff, including myself, last thing we want to do is build a road 24 feet and then rip it all out and, and go to 32. So if they do end up needing this road, they'll be required to build it to 32. If that's the intent. We don't know yet because we don't know what's in the back. But what I don't want, and I know this for a fact, that I don't want the road to be built at 24 and get ripped out on both sides, including the sidewalks, and be done to 32. That we cannot have once we have people moving in there and people start getting used to the fire. So that's kind of why they're here tonight. That That's okay. basically the main goal. Mr. Know. Gagnon, go ahead. Uh, so a few questions for you. One, can you just make it clear for me, what was the total impact of the last plan versus this plan? So I'm looking for the difference in how much you're asking for total impact. So the total impact <coughs> for this proposed plan is 35,756 square feet uh, of grading in the buffer. Again, there's no impact in the actual wetland. The last plan was 19,200 square feet. Got it. Okay. All right. That's, that's what I was just confirming. All right. Um, and I believe the last time we took a walk, we were talking about the difference between residential and grading and then commercial. And if my memory serves me correct, would this new plan, because it's going commercial now, have uh, like granite um, uh, curb? Uh, curb. Thank you, sir. It uh, has curbing, curbing and yes. so forth. Yes. yes. Part of the drainage, uh, the old plan did not have all of the same collect collection of drainage Got this it. does so it has curbing it has uh, catch basins it has pipe underground Got it. and it has uh, actual detention basins okay thank you and that's really the reason for the <coughs> increase in the grading um, in the buffer area because of course you can see and I, I suppose it probably should be stated uh, if, if not for well the road itself runs through the buffer so there's really no way to avoid the buffer at all We've done everything to re avoid the wetland, but we couldn't avoid the buffer because the road is there now. Thank you. Ms. Parkers? Um, so I'm, I'm just um, I'm looking at the initial um, report, the environmental report that I believe you prepared. Um, now, I do realize that this isn't like a new road. It's been there. But this, unless I'm wrong, this would be the first time this road would ever be in use, right? You know, uh, currently as it stands, the road is paved and it's there, but it's not trafficked right no cars go down it or have gone down it so I guess my my question is leading to um, this will be the first time that it gets used so in the report it talks about um, the I'm going to quote from the report the um, proximity to the existing roadways and surrounding commercial uses has the potential for runoff from the areas to enter into the wetlands um, so I know that it's stated there that there isn't any impact, but potentially there would be impact, right, through runoff, um, especially on the road that has never been used before, right? This would be a, a significant change. Um, so my question is, what, what, um, what are, what is in the plans that will address the that that risk, right, of potential runoff on a road that has never been used before and now will potentially um, be used quite significantly for the first time? So there's really two. I'll take it. So our drainage requirements call for us to detain a certain amount of runoff. We don't maintain 100% of the runoff. So we have different storms, you know, one-year storm or two-year storm, five-year storm, 10-year storm, 25, 50, and 100. What our requirements are and what the AOT requires, which is alteration terrain, it's the most strict one. It's close to the state. It requires 25-year runoff. Uh, 210, 25, 25, and 50 for and certain. And 50 things, for yeah. the culverts. So basically what that means is they're going to detain as much as they're required to. But anything beyond that, what they're doing is they're trying to get as much as they can, but then the rest will go to the wetlands or any other place. This is not any different than all the other roads that are out there. So in a nutshell, you're detaining as much as you can, you're treating as much as you can, but if you have a flood, you know, when the first boot comes out and all that, that's when that runoff goes somewhere else. But I, I, should, uh, I can elaborate if, you, if it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so the first plan that we did, the 24-foot plan, we were on the site walk and, and you guys were reviewing, and we were just doing sheet flow, basically just a, a 
spruce up of the road. And to your point, well, okay, now it's going to be used a lot. And that was only, that was sheet flow and just swales. Uh, now we're actually doing uh, what would be more akin to the AOT criteria, which is actually isolating only the pavement flows and treating that and not intermixing everything. So the 24-foot program was, you know, just to basically, a, you know, a, a budget item that was just, it, it was still intermixing a lot of flow to your point. So if we had a point source issue, it would just kind of go everywhere. Now what we did is, uh, since it would be commercial use and everything and potential high load issues, we actually took all the pavement and isolated that pavement and only are treating that so we're not diluting things. And we're, and we're actually taking things underground through, you know, a serial treatment process with, you know, the deep sump catch basins, the curbing. Um, flow is not going to go everywhere anymore. So we're I isolating only that flow, and then we're putting it, uh, we're not serializing the catch basins. So when you, you put them all together in one string, it just makes the flow treatment harder because you're putting stuff in one catch basin that flows to the other one, and there's stuff coming into that catch basin too, and then you got to, like, treat that and it's diluted and you got to keep going down the line so uh, we uh, put in uh, drainage manholes so we don't serialize any of the catch basins which improves treatment um, we're also putting in uh, four bays where there were no four bays before and we're putting in uh, instead of an infiltration basin which is just basically a dish we're doing a wet pond so the wet pond does a lot more of that treatment as well um, so we actually instituted on this summary plan you'll see five boxes in between the two uh, with a 32 and a 24. And we just summarized five takeaways to demonstrate uh, that our, our new design is actually better, just exactly to your point, where we're isolating flows. We're even uh, taking the flows off the existing commercial site and not mixing those flows into our road either. We're going to contain those and put them under the road, continue on their way, because that's you know, clean water, which would be treated up gradient later for another project. So we've done what we should be doing on proper master planning if we are saving the site for, you know, good tax base. And we're doing that in a way, you can see the five criteria that I won't go through everything, but that five criteria with that treatment comparing the 32 versus the 24 is actually, uh, we put that together specifically for someone like yourself would say, wait a minute, uh, How's that going to happen? So that's what this summary plan is for. All right, one, thank one you. One other, uh, just to point out, and that improved drainage, as you can see um, in the plan that we handed out, the top um, section, um, the area to the south of, uh, to the north of the road, that little, that new finger, is all directly related to that improved drainage system. Just tell me about this right here. The other <coughs> question you might have is why couldn't we move that up the hill, you know, that type of thing, and, and take it away from the WCD. Uh, Friars Drive, the end of Friars Drive, the terminus, the existing, terminates at a certain spot. Then there's a culvert that goes under. We're not going to, you know, impact that. But we had to create a low point because it's all now closed drainage, so we have to have catch basins. And that, that vertical control is we have no control over that's the low point so we need to make sure that we captured that low point on our side of fires drive so we wouldn't have cro culverts you know going through each other mm -hmm. and uh, that that held the vertical uh, design points for the pond and we wanted to do a wet pond instead of an infiltration pond because that does a much better job for this type of use uh, the other uh, point is up along ro low road all that is that little impact is a, a, s a treatment swale very simple AOT compliant treatment swale, but the same thing. It's because we had to put catch basins at the entrance way to uh, off Lowell Road, and that drove the vertical elevation so that we we're off by like I don't know 24 inches or so. But we had to theoretically hold those elevations uh, because of the piping and the minimum cover. But we do have a 140 foot long treatment swale there that easily passes AOT criteria just for that little set of catch basins, which are not strung together. Uh, and they have the, uh, the pre treatment. So as a matter of fact, when we apply for AOT on this, it's going to be a lot easier for us. Uh, the AOT on the last one was kind of difficult. Uh, this one is going to go much easier because we have all these extra things in here on treatment uh, that makes the review a lot cleaner, actually. So it's going to be easier for us to get the AOT permit amendment on this than, than you would think. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, we'll get ready to cut off um, conversation. I think we got a lot. We'll go to one more. Uh, actually, Mr. Collins had a. I, I, he answered my question. Okay, uh, Mr. Gagnon. I guess I'll um, just kind of top it off here from my last question. So I guess the difference you're asking for to clarify is you're almost looking to double the impact. So from before it was 19,200 to, to 35,750. It's a almost 15,000 uh, square feet addition. Is there anything you could do for putting actually a a portion of the unbuilt land aside and, and as kind of conservation for that region? Is that something you can work into your plans as a mitigation? We did. I don't, yeah. No. We there, did. There is, so to the. This area. This so where that drainage swale is for, to the uh, <coughs> south of Friars Drive, we've actually, we're going to have a, an easement in that general area. An easement. A conservation right. easement. Mm -hmm. And how, how big is that area? Can you see the square feet? It's, or it's the entire wetland uh, pocket it's here. It's the entire area to the south of the road. Right. Okay. On, so. on, well, actually, let me clarify that a little bit. So you may remember that the uh, Dakota Properties is acquiring the business zone, which is uh, along Lowell Road. Correct. So right. the, the area to the south of Friars Drive, but within the business area, will be subject to an easement. Okay. All right. And, and Elvis, were you able to potentially <coughs> get that? Yeah. I'll, I'll just a rough idea because I, I don't think we have the plans, but I'll I'll just show you real quick. What because obviously, I'd, I'd love to see um, at least as much as the difference you're asking for, if not more, oh. of course. Ten times as much. Okay. Yes. That's at least Great. a good. Yep. Okay. So can you turn that, the zones yeah, on? That's a good one right there. Yeah, right over here. If you want to just come up real quick and just kind of show. So this is the fryer, which area you're planning to put a, a, an easement on. Obviously, this is all the wetland in question. You want to come up and show them real quick? Sure. So this, this area in here, it's yep. a combination of wetlands and uplands. Uh, this would all be in an easement to the, to the town for conservation purposes, also to the town for utilities and, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, this area down in here. No, not all that down there. It's, it's only the stuff that's within right. our, our but, zone. But this is an uh, unbuildable lot um, that we created. So whatever's in our zone, we have rights to. Right. But in the Same. back, it, it, through our subdivision that was approved, it's it's a, a an extra lot that is non billable and it's just protected because it's it's just same thing it's it's drainage and so then the so if I get this correctly if I understand what you're saying is I can vaguely see the actual drive there yeah so pretty much where you put that right there yeah so that whole so lower section right okay there. and so you did mention that it, there is some wetland in there yep I mean how much I mean if, if it is wetland you couldn't build it in anyway so giving us wetland um, wouldn't be a, a big there's a large piece of upland on the other side of it. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Th that's that's true. There's art. Uh, if you didn't hear because of the cameras, there's a large piece of wetland. I mean, upland inside this area as well. And and it's important to say here they don't have to give anything to the town. So it's not like they're doing themselves a favor. Let's not come across like that. But there's about 120,000 square feet, which is equivalent to about two or three acres worth of wetland and upland that's being put aside as a um, conservation easement, which it's. You know, it's not, it's not a small area. Okay. But, um, well, thank you. I guess that was my concern. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's cool. Appreciate that. So with that, I'm going to um, cut off conversation, and we'll take a vote on the expansion from, of the wetland special instructions from 24 feet to 32 feet on the uh, commercial side. Any more discussion? <coughs> All right. We'll take a vote. Um, We'll start with Mr. Ms. Parkhurst. Um, we're voting on favor of the wetland special exemption. Can, yeah, can um, we just from 24 right, feet 24 to 32 24 feet. Yeah. Okay, we need a, a motion. Oh, yeah. so okay. Be written down by so. um, Mr. Collins. Uh, all right. I'll, uh, I move to recommend a favorable recommendation for the wetland special exempt exemption application filed by Five Way Realty Trust based on the testimony presented by the applicant's representative tonight. That's the motion. Okay. <laughs> I guess I can second it. Okay. Right. Let's go to discussion. Right. 
Any further discussion? Oh. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Do I need to sign this thing now or later or? Yeah. We're all set? No, because it's not Excuse a wet me, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was looking down, uh, were there any opposed? No, none, zero. Okay. Thank you and uh, hopefully you can get out of here and watch the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll see. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. I got it on uh, <laughs> I'll try not to shout updates. Next <laughs> time. So the next thing is uh, sign development and placement at entrance and conservation properties. That's also about the bridge that we're building and um, also it's about uh, if, um, if we ever get around to building a, uh, um, what's the, I can't think of the word, that I wanted to build over at uh, Burns property, Colburn. Colburn. Um, oh, the, like, uh, the viewing. The uh, viewing station. station. Yes, Mr. Uh, Collins. Uh, can we handle these one at a time because the sign uh, question is whether or not we want to place signs at certain locations for a conservation property. There's a price tag involved with that. Right. We already know what the price tag is involved, so can we talk to that one first? Do signs first? Yes. All right, let's talk about signs. Our goal is to put signs, conservation signs, um, um, on each of our properties. Um, Musquash, both Woodland Drive and Mushkosh Road, um, Rangers, Rangers, Town Forest, um, Colburn, and um, was there another one? Um, Trigate. Trigate and Trigate. Right. Six signs. I think it was a total of 10 that we had talked about. They were going to be certain size. Um, I had um, I had a, a estimate um, on here. Uh, that I had gotten, um, they were gonna look like this. You can pass that around, but it won't say musquash on it. I don't. Can I plug that in so mm -hmm. people can see it? Do you wanna? Right. Actually, do you wanna email okay. it to me and uh, I can well, put it in the USB? The, it's, yeah. mean, for the Pro record, that's the that's the uh, public access sign that's down at the end of Woodland. Right. right. We're so gonna use that one. You know, yeah. Mr. Collins, go ahead. You already. Uh, yeah. So to elaborate, the thought process is just to put a sign out in front of the properties that are more commonly used throughout the community that would allow uh, the public to see approximately where to park, where the entrances are, and things like that. Nothing, nothing elaborate, nothing too descript, but it is a point where if, if somebody's coming down uh, Rangers Drive, they come to the cul-de-sac, there's nothing there. Right. And do <coughs> we hard. put in a big kiosk and expend a lot of money, or do we just simply put, you know, town of Hudson conservation property and uh, at the entrance to the park? You know. Yeah. So. Okay. Sorry. You first, please. Um, so just you know, somebody that has a lot of experience taking people out there to see these places for the first time, I do think a marker of some kind is like vitally necessary. Right. Um, However, a lot of feedback that I've collected over the past year is, you know, people will reference all the time. Um, they'll reference Pelham all the time, the signage there and what they mm -hmm. see, and they reference um, like Hollis, communities like that. And that's like their point of reference is why don't we have that? So mm -hmm. I'm just sharing that as feedback. I mm -hmm. think the markers are vitally necessary. We need to get those in like sooner than later. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, you know, sort of the vision for what we're doing, especially you know, coming from us, you know, probably is to have that vision of, you know, what our community wants and, mm -hmm. you know, signs like that. I know they are more expensive and they take a little bit more time to plan. Um, is that still on the table to discuss or? Absolutely. Okay. I think, I think it would be. I, uh, these are just basically if you drive through like um, some of the back roads of Connecticut and stuff like where there's a trailer bolt launch or something like that, you, you easily recognize access points because yes. they're there. Yeah, you know, well, and right. to have a kiosk, usually like what we have at Musquash Pond, that's a little more, f that's a little off the road. Mm. And after my conversations with numerous people at Old Home Days this year, they didn't really know where a lot of these properties were. Absolutely. You know? so, yeah. So we figured this was a less expensive way 
to do it. Uh, the signs would be nondescript, but placed in a position that would allow the traveling public to go by and say, hey, I'm going to go back there one day and take a hike or whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm cu uh, curious to see it um, and then also know the cost. And, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Gagnon. Um, so I'm, I'm a little torn because I, I definitely feel both of your opinions. I mean, obviously, I agree the properties need to be marked, surly, uh, surely. Um, but I do tend to lean towards a, a slightly bigger picture, something a little nicer. I mean, we, we did get the forestry commission money of close to $15,000. So, I mean, we're not dealing with a couple hundred bucks here. So we can certainly utilize that to do something properly. If we're going to have uh, a, a long-term plan, maybe that we can work something together where we do the smaller signs just at the road entrance or somewhere just as a, a quick eye catch. And then if we had a long-term plan to do larger signs, more, you know, more well done with the anticipation, if need be parking lots, you know, but something as a, as a stepped plan, I might get on board. Um, but as a, as a permanent solution, I, I tend to think this might be too small of an initiative. Nobody ever said it was a permanent plan. We're just simply are pointing out some of the, the properties that we have around our community that nobody really knows where they're located. Agreed. And the street side sign allows the public to see that. Long-term plans, I mean, as we progress through the, the beginning of next year, we can always set up a calendar of, or, or a schedule of mm -hmm. build processes that allow us to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's really not a, um, a money issue per se. It's not a, a, a break in the bank to spend some money. We're just looking to get some of the properties a little better visibility for the traveling public, that's all. Yeah, I understand your point of view. I mean, we got at Musquash, we have one on both ends. Uh, the town forest, we have a nice kiosk. It'd be nice to put those in every, uh, the, the Rangers town forest, the things like that. But we have to develop those as we go along. And this here is a short-term solution that allows the people to, to know where these properties exist. Understood. So, okay. All right. So I think there was a total of 10, and um, I don't have my... Uh, my paperwork um i thought it was, excuse me for looking at my phone i thought i had a uh, i thought i had it in my phone and i didn't about uh um, how much it would cost to uh, to do 10 signs uh, i do remember it, it was well under um 600 i think it was less than that um, from what i had gathered and what it was is um we had small signs that you just saw and along with the poles and the bolts and everything and the laser uh lettering to be done and it was under $600 to do the 10 signs. I can get a better quote um, and show you that quote and send it to everybody, you know, but um, I, think the, I think the signs are important and we should at least get those signs and get them out there and get them in the ground before it gets too, too uh, cold. Yes, Mr. Dickerson. Well, I was just thinking, do you want a motion to, ex uh, like a not to exceed motion? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, not to exceed $600 for the proposed uh, well, wayfinding signage yeah. um, so our, as presented this evening. So I'm going to recommend um, um, a motion. I can't recommend a motion. Well, who? Well, hey, that, that, that is I a recommend motion. a motion. Ken though. made a motion. <laughs> Anybody want to second? I'll second it. Yeah, if you think that 600 is going to cover yeah, it. Yeah, you know, definitely. Gonna, I know it. So... Would you like to specify an account as well to that motion? So why don't we cut the PO oh, and I'll yeah. look at which uh, one to hit. Well, that would be from the... Um, the count. Yeah. What do we have money left on? Account, you want to do the conservation small engine ma maintenance account? That will be account number 06. Just go this straight way. Oh, this is good. That one there. Okay. 5586. Two, zero, two, Zero, zero, zero. You got it. Not to expend no more than $600 out of that f small maintenance equipment account, not to exceed, yeah. Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, which one did you mention for clerical purposes? The account? Yeah. 5586-202-000. Five, five, eight, zero, 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 zero. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just before we uh, take a vote on that, um, would you clarify that these signs would not be Property specific, or just say Hudson Conservation? Is that correct? Yeah, just going to say Hudson Conservation. So I guess to answer it's my not, question, we could potentially move them in, in the future. We right. could put them yep. there now, 
Yep. And then when we put larger signs, we can move them to other locations. Yeah, right. that's why exactly the right. intent that of not oh, identifying okay. that piece of property like uh, Robinson Pond or Rangers Drive, it, because it becomes more usable. Right. Uh, and uh, Pelham Road is a good example, right? You drive past Pelham Road uh, entrance at 30 miles an hour and blank, you've missed it. <laughs> yes. Right at least, and it's very hard to see. Even uh, Randy, I mean, Mr. Chairman and I went out there <laughs> and uh, did some trimming. Uh, but it's still a very difficult uh, entry point to see. And I've been down to Rangers Drive numerous times, but when you get down to the end of the cul-de-sac, it's overgrown, and it, especially in the summertime. Mm. It's like, well, I don't know where to go in. I see a fire hydrant, and you know, the next thing you know, you think you're on somebody's private property. So yeah. uh, doing the signs is a good thing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't disagree at all. I, I, I love the signage ideas. I was just a little uh, contemplating the actual size and permanency, but... If they're non non specific, then I think that's actually a value add because we can use them yep. in other entrances, other locations, so they become multiple u multi use. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we had talked about in the right. last meeting. So, um, okay. I'm yeah. happy. I think this is just a formal motion with more members here to um, vote it in to get that going. Okay. But for now. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Okay. Uh, other than yes. it, normally, we I think we would take it out of professional services, but I don't. I don't think there's enough. Think money we're gonna I, I spend any. Uh, well, we might have a project where we gotta buy some older materials, but we could always, if we had to, take it out of the other one. So it's, it's to put your ideas, as long as your bottom line is okay, you're okay. Mm -hmm. You can always hit one account or the other. It's not a big deal. It, we, you can go either way, but the bottom line is that's what we end up holding at the end of the day. So you're okay as long as your bottom line yep. is okay. Well, as long as we don't break the chainsaw. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. You can go over the account, that particular account. If that, you know, that's the case. As long as your bottom line is very total, it's less, you're fine. Okay. All right. End of discussion. Uh, we will take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Raise your hand. All in favor wins. No opposes. Okay. Next is the bridge. All right, so we're trying to um, build a bridge. You guys, everyone knows we're over at Musquash that goes into um, Musquash property from Hudson to Pelham. Um, I have been speaking with Mr. Collins and myself and a couple others just to build the bridge, um, about 22 feet, approximately 22 feet. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking for under $1,000. Um, there's no ramp on either side, okay? That doesn't include the ramps. We just want to build a walkway going over. Um, if you, you guys know where the old bridge is? You know where the old bridge, er, everyone knows where the old bridge is. It's to the left of that a little bit. There's a small um, um, gap between there. It's about 20 feet, maybe 22 feet tops. Might be a little bit less than that. So we're just looking to lay a bridge over there. And then in the spring, if we have to, we can build ramps, you know, like taking um, 10 by sixes or, or two by tens or two by eights and laying them across so they can walk across a little bit easier. But um, right now it will be fine. So the bridge will be pressure treated wood. We use screws and, um, and it's about 22 feet. What do you say? 30, um, 32 inches across uh, width, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, a, uh, a four wheeler won't be able to go over it. That's what we're trying to avoid, you know? So... Any discussions, any questions, any thoughts, ideas, Mr. Gagnon? Um, actually, for, for Mr. Uh, Dima, where, at what point does a bridge go from being like a temporary bridge to cr at a small crossing to needing like permits? I mean, we're not doing footings. So this here, we're not this, making anything This huge. bridge here is is replaced. It's repair and replace. Uh, That's all we're doing, repair and replace. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe in these permits. I'm just curious, my own right. knowledge, what would be that, that checkpoint where it would hit? What size or, or what what stipulation? If I we mean, were going to yeah. build, if we were going to put pillars into the ground or concrete into the ground, we'd be changing the whole um, um, atmosphere and yeah. the land uh, mass of that bridge. And yeah. We're not doing any of that. Of course, you know, I don't consider this like a permanent structure. Okay. It's not any different than a shed, located okay. from one side to the other. Right. Um, as the chairman said, you know, if you needed footings, or if you needed something and made it more permanent, like different. pouring footings or that would be a little different. Okay. This is not any different than bringing a platform over that you built in and you're just moving it around. Okay. I, I, I don't see it. When I did, uh, just to put you at ease, because <laughs> um, I know where you're coming from, um, when I did the drainage 
um, assessment of the town about a year or two ago. There's a lot of property owners that basically built their own little bridge over. Yeah. And there was no permits for them. It was a nothing intrusive. It was just simply trying to cross a little channel, a little dam. I thought it was kind of, you know, cute, I guess. But it was just, I found it in weird spots everywhere. I'm like, how did they get this stuff here? But it was all portable. Like, you can just go from one place to another and break it itself. Um, it's already happened. I'm not concerned about it as Ms. long Clark, as it's safe. Ms. Clark, Chris. Um, so I'm no bridge builder by any means, <laughs> but I am a connoisseur of bridges out on the hiking trail, and I've seen a lot of ones that look great, like they've been around forever, and I've seen ones that look like the sunken bridge out in Hudson yeah. that goes over to Pelham. Yeah. Um, so I know we're doing like a rebuild and replace, which I get it's cheap, it's quick, get it done. Um, but devil's advocate, um, is that the best choice for a 1000 bucks, or is there um, a little middle ground? Like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, like in this space is really, it's not, there's not depth in the water right it's more of just flooding and um you know seasonally like it can be really muddy and wet in there and then other times it's a little bit drier um again i'm not a bridge builder but you know almost like the way that they build docks with the right. the floating mm -hmm. like 55 gallon drum kind of format yeah. is that something to conceptualize here that would float no and I could, could be <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Have you been over to um, into Pelham and gone into the Pelham Conservation off of Sherburn Road? They have uh, a couple yes. of bridges over there. So our idea came from that type of a bridge, you know. Okay. Um, maybe Mr. Collins can add to that. But um, that's a very sturdy, strong bridge, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'll let Mr. Collins fill in. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, – well, I want to reiterate uh, the – it won't be – half baked it, it'll be a very strong structure that is uh, that'll stay in the test of time like the other bridges that are along the uh the trail system throughout the musquash pond mm -hmm. conservation areas uh the the premise behind it being uh we want to be able to connect the two parcels of land that open up another couple hundred acres of trails yeah to the hiking public so, and obviously we don't want to build something that would be dangerous to the, to right. the public either. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, when we reviewed some of the, some of the bridges, actually I've, I've gone out to uh, Beaver Brook over in Hollis, seen mm -hmm. some of the examples over there, and they actually have some very nice structures. Yeah. Uh, the one at uh, Sherburn uh, off of uh, uh, Sherburn Road is a very nice structure, you know. So whatever we decide to put in there, uh, its final version, Will be something that is uh, well built, well uh, and safe for the for the public. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as the water goes, I was a little amazed that that's a lot deeper there than you think. Hmm. You know, in terms of because uh, it's a channel, the, the water is always flowing. I've never seen it really dry. Yeah. But uh, I had to cross over to get a measurement off of uh, some logs, and I had a stick with me. And believe me, a couple of times it went. <laughs> straight down and I didn't hit the bottom. I thought so. you were going to say you found out firsthand how yeah, deep it was. Yeah. yeah, luckily I didn't find <laughs> out totally firsthand. Uh, yeah. So Go the ahead. other the other thing uh, I want to just point out on uh, that Randy had uh, mentioned was the, the initial span would be built in place on on the opposing side uh, there's actually a old stone wall mm. that will be used as a landing when you come off the bridge. The rocks are very wide, they're very stable. Yep. Uh, it's an easy access point, and that stone wall has been there a lot longer than uh, than I've been in Hudson, so right. you know, <laughs> so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, Mr. Gagney. Just two last questions. One, a as listening to you guys talk, um, obviously we all know there's one that's still there. Have we thought about how to get that one out? <laughs> when we get our boots on, we'll figure it out okay. then. So that was question one. On fire, one. call the fire department. <laughs> 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 we'll worry about that Please when we get okay, out there, good. you know? And the, the second question is... Well, it might be hey, let him finish. Yeah, let him finish up. Finish up. Finish up. Uh, <laughs> the second question, to, to stop what has happened already, um, you know, if we build the bridge, as, as you're saying, is there a way we could chain both sides to trees so if there is a 10-year, 25-year flood, it doesn't happen just like the last one. It kind of lifts up and, and moves off and flows into so the pond. kind of answer that question. When we build this bridge, there's a couple of rocks over there. Mm. We're going to build the bridges so they, they're on top of the rocks okay. so that it won't move, you know. Okay. So you'll see that when we go out there. It, there should be a, a way to anchor it, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to alleviate any of those concerns too. Yeah. Right. E either on the upland, uh, on the upstream or downstream side. I mean, you don't want to be on the downstream side, but on the upland. 
we can we could do something to anchor it into the rock. Like I said, on the opposing side, there's massive boulders right. that right. form a stone wall. Yeah, I just want to make sure it doesn't float into yeah. the, the pond. Right. It, it won't away. float. And <laughs> just just one quick suggestion to your point: if if the commission ever goes to the next level and goes for that little, I can I consider it like the Cadillac version of the bridge, mm -hmm. and trying to keep it eco friendly is you can drive. Um, pressure tree posts like you've seen in marsh areas yeah. the nice you know four yes. that has them mm -hmm. and i think that's what you were referring to something yeah. more permanent yeah, yeah. something yeah. that's basically it's got its own footings but it's not permanent like concrete but it's right. still like you know 10 12 foot um six by six probably pressure tree posts driven into it yeah uh, but those require you know equipment to come in and drive and to on each side in, yeah. But I think that's what you were referring to yeah. earlier. So there could be something for something longer mm. or, you know, more, you know, probably we'll see more yeah. traffic. But for this, I think you're on the right track. Yep. Okay. But yep. that could be the Cadillac version or something yep. else on the road. Yeah. Mr. Dickerson, you had a question? Well, no, it was <laughs> just really a thought. And that was because of the, old, the other one. We might be able to pull it out with the winch. Like I have a 3,500 pound winch on the front of my machine we can figure that out yeah, yeah maybe, maybe <laughs> somebody's got something better than that there's some beavers yeah get, we'll yeah. get some beavers out there beaver it, you know it's yeah and then and, the, and the other thing is that the yeah the flow is uh has the potential to be a lot but that beaver dam holds back quite a bit yeah. right. right so as long as it doesn't give out and it hasn't yet in <laughs> yeah. 20 years All right. that roughly they've been going the out there so gone at that point. Yeah. Yeah. so if there isn't any more questions yeah. I, I just want to put out one more aspect of sure. this project in in general because we all hiked musquash we all know that that beaver dam is a mile from here or a mile from there mm -hmm. luckily we have an option here uh, mr uh, the chairman went down and spoke with one of the landowners that abuts one of our trails and instead of being a, a mile and a half of trudging through the woods with materials he he will allow us to drop the materials in his front yard and then bring it over to the build site, and uh, he has no problem in doing that. Mr. Mm. Uh, Mr. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. I think it was Mr. Brown. No, Dumas, right? Dumas. Was it Dumas? Yes, Mr. Dumas. Right. Mr. Right. Dumas. Nice. So, yes. and after speaking with him, he was more than amicable about, you know, coming through his property. It, it, there's a trail that goes right to the, the trail that leads down there. I mean, you're looking at maybe a quarter mile of bringing materials, and if we can get your your quad and a little trailer or something we can drag the materials right down there as well okay so um i think a motion to uh not to exceed a thousand dollars in getting materials to uh to build a bridge over at much quash quad much so quash pond refer to an account please account would be oh yeah we're going to get into this now we've got to get the budget now <laughs> yeah, yeah now you should go the professional so so you want to go, uh, well, we can go into uh, <coughs> conservation professional uh, services if we want, but we just got to be careful of our money. So uh, we'll take $1,000, and I'll give you the account number, out of Conservation Commission Professional Services. That account number is 5586 You entertain the motion, so I'll move the motion. Yep. All right. Second. Mike. All right. Second it. Did you second it? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any negatives? No. Awesome. Awesome. Um, just to uh, add something, as we none of us have our badges on, um, but I want to uh, emphasize um, what Mr. Collins put out. I went to Mr. Dumas's house and I had my badge on. And when I knocked on his door, he answered, I introduced myself, I showed him my badge, mm -hmm. and I told him he could take a picture of it, and if he wanted me to wait, he could call down to City Hall to verify it. So when you're out and about town, or you're doing a walk someplace and you're by yourself, or if you're gonna look at a piece of property or something, or you're going to talk to someone, you really need to have your badge on. That's, that's to me, that's important, because that's, recognizes that who we are from the town and what we do and they can call down to the town so having your badge on out in town 
you're doing conservation work or if you're checking out property, you should be wearing that. Um, what I was told tonight, it's not necessary to wear it here, you know, um, but when you're in the, also in the building and you're doing professional work, or you should be on a regular basis if you can um, wear your badge at Town Hall, okay? Just kind of want to emphasize that because I think um, uh, Mr. Dumas was very, uh, very easygoing, um, very open to hear what I had to say about that bridge down there, but I wanted to make him at ease in having the badge actually does make a difference, all right? So that's just a reminder to make sure you use your badge when you're out and about doing uh, work for the Conservation Commission. All right. Um, let's move on to the uh, river cutting at 68 Pelham Road. Um, I'm going to let Mr. C I've had a lot of fun doing this, but I'm going to let Mr. Collins do this part. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a lot of fun doing this. Well, uh, you're all aware that we are having the ribbon cutting this Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, we put out a press release. Uh, the Hudson Litchfield News printed it. Did an outstanding job. They got, even got the GIS map uh, to put over it, which is really good. Uh, and uh, Ms. Parkhurst, uh, Mrs. Parkhurst uh, placed on Facebook uh, the ribbon cutting promotional flyer that we put out. So hopefully the public has a chance to see that. Uh, the, the new Hudson, New Hampshire resident, Hudson resident page, whatever they call it now. <laughs> um, it should, it gets a lot of, uh, a lot of looks. So hopefully we have a strong turnout. Uh, the field has been cleaned up. Uh, the trail has been cleared. I'm going to go out and do a little trail marking uh, because there are some tr offshoot trails that wander onto private property. We don't want people wandering onto private property until we can get out there and actually mark the trails. I'm going to use blue flagging tape to continue. Uh, uh, Town Engineer Dima went up to the easement by Oak Ridge Estates and marked a uh, trail along that easement that will connect to the Hazelton uh, Farm trail system in mm -hmm. Benton's at some point. So our job will be to uh, uh, finish that trail system at some point and properly mark it and that, that way people know. There, you also have the loop trail that goes around the pond, which is nice, but it's not a big piece of property. I don't think we need a, a lot of wormy trails running through there. Uh, a couple of main trails, and that's it. Mis so. Mr. Gagnon. Uh, a slight spinoff, but just a thought. Your signs would be phenomenal at the edge of Benson's, because I know I've walked Benson's and that, that side trail before, and I've never really seen where the trail's a 68. I don't know if I can have them that quick. Well, no, 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 of course, not for this weekend, but at right. some no, point, right. I think that would right. be a perfect spot for it. But that yeah. way people from Benson's can say, oh, I can go that way, and you right. can come on to conservation right. property. Mm -hmm. right. I know that... Um, it's supposed to rain either Wednesday or Thursday. In maybe Wednesday. a little bit. Right now it's Wednesday. But Wednesday? It could be both. Yeah, definitely so on Wednesday. I'm going to go up there tomorrow mid morning with my uh, weed whacker and cut some grass up there. Okay. You know, so we have a bigger area, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, right. Ms. Parkers. Um, just to, did you specify in the um, brochure, you know, that, like that image that you sent me? Um, parking, like where where are you directing the public to park? Well, uh, parking is going to have to, because we're holding it at the entrance to 68 Pelham Road, parking is going to have to be along Pelham Road. And okay. that's a good segue to lead into this. Uh, I, you know, after looking at the roadway itself, it's fairly wide. Uh, there is ample parking. I don't expect 300 people. No, no. But, I mean, for 30 people, there's enough room, I think, along the westbound lane to facilitate parking, and if people do pull in on the right side, uh, when Rain, um, when the chairman and I were out there, there, uh, there were some cars on that side. It didn't right. seem to impede okay. any traffic. Yeah. PD um, will be there as well. PD will be there as well. Well, all right. So that that sure. leads the next segue. Uh, 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 Town engineer Dima uh, recommended that we notify Hudson Police and ask maybe for a, uh, a car to be present. So that people aren't blocking any driveways or things along that line, and uh, I, you know, I think I think that should pretty much do it. I mean, we could pull a couple of cars off, you know, for conservation commission personnel. I guess we could pull uh, you know some of our vehicles up into the property, but I I mm -hmm. don't want to start a start a precedence well, if people see cars pulled up. What I would do is yeah. what I, what I will do tomorrow when I I'll go over to Hudson PD and ask them if we can have a. Uh, um, uh, a constable there for about two hours. Right. Um, go ahead, Mr. Warren. A detail may cost you. Right. 
So maybe a car swing by just before right. it starts. And once it starts, everybody's parked anyway, won't be a problem. Okay, just that have way, just yeah, just, swing by. Just ask them to have a car swing by. What time does it start? Nine, nine o'clock. So between quarter of nine and nine o'clock, have a car come by, just take a look. That way you're not paying the detail and there's no need right. for it. Okay. If you're only expect, you know, I don't expect, you know, a huge amount either. Right. I mean, we'll get the people that are that are active in the conference and then the groups that do the hikes mm -hmm. and stuff probably. Right. Yep. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't pay for a detail. i just have one come by. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Mr. Barmerick. Yes, sir. <laughs> we could park on the cul-de-sac and allow everybody else to uh -huh. park along Palm Road. The cul-de-sac. Yeah, there's the oh. little cul-de-sac there. I forget the name of it. Yeah. That's just yeah, that one, one two houses up. Right. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, we can do that. Right. To yeah. the yeah. west side of the property. Okay. Yeah. As long as you have somebody standing there, you know, I have found, you know, that's you typically what I do. I park my car kind of far away. I go stand there, and then as people come in, I kind of direct them in. And if I see them park somewhere that they shouldn't, I tell them to, you know, move or I suggest where they should park. Okay. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I will tell you, people will be asking, like, exactly where do they need to drive their car. So um, I think I will update just the invite just to specify that they're going to be parking alongside Pelham Road. Yes. Um, okay. Because mm -hmm. people might assume, like, do I park at Benson's and hike through it because it's adjacent? So I'll, I'll just make sure that it's clear there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll also reach out to, um, if it's okay, with um, Lisa. Right? Lisa, Lisa Newt. Yeah. yeah. Just about a town posting, right? Like from – Town web. Yeah. Town, town website, yeah. right. Yeah. That might be nice just to – Right. Right. Clear. Ideally – I don't have a problem with that. If it could have been worked out, and I don't know if it's probably a short notice, ideally, because that's the way I handled it when I end up checking out Pelham Road, is I park at Oak Ridge right by the clubhouse, mm -hmm. which typically doesn't get used, yeah. has plenty of parking spaces, and actually work your way from the trails, their property, get to Benson, and then work your way through the easement to get to to, to Pelham Road. Right. That would be ideal, but I'm not sure if... If you, you know, if you have enough time to reach out, because I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to impose something like that on yeah. the development. They're, they're, you know, we have the easement going through there, and that's a heck of a hike too. You know, yeah, yeah. it's not bad. You know, it's yeah. for us to be hiking. It's yeah, fine. But nah, come on, if, you guys. If we have special guests or something like that. Yeah. You know? The the whole premise behind the ribbon cutting, and this, uh, I I want to give credit where credit is due. This is actually. Uh, Mr. Morin's, uh, Slockman Morin's idea, I'm just running with it, uh, is to get us some PR out mm. in the real world and maybe influence some landowners, uh, other landowners within the community that, you know, conservation is maybe a good thing, you know. So, you mm. know, it, it's a good way for us to get our, our, our wares out there. Yeah. And like I said, I, I thank Mr. Morin for suggesting it. Uh, where I am just simply running with the idea. So we all are. At yeah. This point. Oh, yeah. Very much. We appreciate it. You know. Okay. So, um, any more discussion? I'd like to move on, Mr. Dickerson. Just a quick one. It might be raining, so. <laughs> yeah, rain or shine, we're still yeah, having. We're still do it. Rain or shine. Yep. Saturday, no matter what. Um, okay. And I'll try to take my, you know, like as I had talked to you earlier, I'll try to maybe pick a day this week where I can go out and take my Polaris out. Go get. We can go together. Yep. Grab that drum at least, maybe you know, drive over the weeds a little bit too to pack that down and maybe trim a few other shrubs okay. back. We can touch base on that and go out there together, right? Okay, so the next thing is, um, and I'll let Mr. Dickerson talk about it because we were changing our minds back and forth. Schedule a cleanup day for town forest. Do we want to do town forest, or did you want to do something else for a cleanup day? Oh, um, well. We were we're not going to be able to do any of the bridge work. No, not until at least next before month. Before the next meeting, which is what the eighteenth of November. Right. So, um, so the f so one the quick thought would be to try to go back out to the Kendall Hill Town Forest, work on the segment of the perimeter trail that we didn't get to last time because we only had a couple of people, and finish that at least and if possibly well do some signposts but if we do the signposts last time we did the signposts we rented a, a drill mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure if we want to do that yet or not 
So, do you want to schedule something for? Um, I imagine the signs would probably. I'm guessing, say two weeks, roughly. I don't think it's going to take that long, but I'm guessing. So if we schedule something early November, you know, maybe we can go out there and put some signs out. So is there a specific date? Does everyone have their calendars out? Um, I think February 1st, I mean February, November 1st is not really a good day. November 4th? Um, no, the first week of November is bad because we have the, um, the on Saturday we have the conference. It That's Saturday, over. November 2nd. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about November 4th. That's Monday, that week, from the 4th to the 8th. Well, we're not going to do it during the week. And we'd have okay. to be on the weekend. So November, right, if the 9th, yeah, that's yeah, six. Seven. We could do it on a Sunday, um, um, either November 9th or November 10th. November 9th is a Saturday. November 10th is a Sunday. Mr. Collins. Uh, I Just so we can get this clarified, uh, we should probably just concentrate on finishing up the perimeter trail at Town Forest, and if we have a, any additional time, then and we want to sink a few signposts in. These are not the signs that we're talking about. He, Ken was oh, you're talking about trail signs. referring to just, just the post, trail oh, signs. Oh, the post. Okay, right, okay. Right. So... Okay. But we should finish that off because right. people are using the town for us and, you know, the, the uh, logging operations have completed. So if there's anything that needs to be cleaned up, it, it should get done. Okay. So. Okay. So with that being said, would November 9th or November 10th work out for you guys? I can't do it. I'm going to be out of the state. You're going to be out of the state. Okay. Um, I'm, I, I'm oh, it's made. Veterans Day weekend. Yes. Right. November 10th, that's correct. So we might as well wait until really we can do it. The f oh, Our meeting is on Monday, so we can do it the following weekend, the 16th or the 17th. I can do the 17th. I can do the 17th. I can do the 17th. Yeah, 17th. 17th. 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. sounds good. At uh, Town Forest. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, for Elvis, um, I was... When we were out there walking the um, town forest, like the initial lane, there was like tons of like brush, you know, mm -hmm. like just kind of nuisance brush that was like curving over. Um, would we be able to get the like DPW? Do they have like the brush kind of clearing? So they got the they got the bucket truck. Mm. But oh. between fire department and them actually doing other, it would be tough to get them in. Okay. I cannot commit them or even. Imagine to ask them because they'll flip out and I just. But there's uh, no like machine like do like uh, the forester actually is that, you know, had the thought pop in my head when we were walking down that main road. He was like, oh, if your DPW department has those, like cutter like they're. Yeah, so they're, you're like, talking about the ones that clean the slopes. Mm. They do have that equipment in there, but mm. that's if we use it for right away clearing, mm. you know, and anything like that. I'm not sure. I know that the ones that had had some issues with that, so they tried to only use it for areas they really needed in the right away instead of going in. Yeah. And now they use it for like the water access that we have, like the towers. But I'm not sure. I, I, I would, if you want to reach out to DPW and ask them directly, um, you, you can do that to give them an area to roughly where mm. it is. Because it, it, it could save us maybe like hours of labor if we ever wanted to clean up that area. Because some of it's like blocking, like some of the really nice parts of the trail. Like in the forest, I don't know if you remember, he had called that out as well as the entryway. He was talking about if we could clear that a little bit, it might be more appealing to the street. People could actually see and be mm -hmm. it'd be inviting uh, for them to come in. Uh, I, um, have you been by the town forest in the last couple of weeks? Um, I was there like maybe a month ago. Okay, so it's been cleared out. You know, when you drive down, right, and Smith's Farm's on your right, when you drive down at Smith's Farm, yeah. you can see the town forest sign now because that right. whole area has been cleared. Oh, clean the heck out. oh yeah, we okay. cleared that oh, out. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. We, did. Okay. Okay. we did. We did. We all did. I yeah. Know. yeah, no, I agree. It was very heavily yes. vegetated. Yes, very. But we did. did uh, <laughs> yeah, we cleaned it the heck okay. out of that. Yeah. The entrance yeah. area. Probably tired now. Right. right so. Yeah. But okay. it, like the, you're going to the point. If we finish a project, that should be the project we finish. Is getting yeah. the permanent trail up and and cleared and. Everything else. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was just s simply asking the question because, you know, obviously with manpower and, you know, little labor that we have available in our time, it right. would be amazing to get that support. Right. Yeah. Yeah, their the argument would be the same. We don't have any people <laughs> either for it, yeah. but it's worth asking. I don't want to be the bad guy, but yeah. you can definitely yeah, ask, ask that question. Yeah, we can ask the question. Depending yeah. if you have okay. the rainy day or if they can't put it in their to-do list. Yep. Mrs. Yeah. Parker, I, I do have a third-party contractor who does that stuff as well if we really found the absolute need for it, maybe to pay money, but mm -hmm. yeah, there was at least there. Yeah, There yeah. was a neighbor next door that volunteered to help us out with her lawnmower to go out there and cut it when, when if needed be. Oh well, a little, yeah, or a little bit more than one yeah. more. They the tra yeah, they have a tractor and some other right. equipment, right. but Perfect. and they are the people that were there initially and then wow. built all the duplexes on that side of the road. Okay, yes, uh, Mr. Dickerson. They, they, I would say let's take a look at the areas that we may want to consider to see what the the actual scope of work is that makes sense. Because the last thing I wanted, the thing that popped in my head, the little caution flag, was is that we don't want to take um, the uh, the large cutter out there and have it like cut invasive species that would and, and sometimes that <laughs> stuff travels True. Mm -hmm. in, yeah. further into the wet, wetland. Yeah. Um, but so we we need to see what it is. That What's we there? Cut yeah, back absolutely. And yep. and whether it makes sense or not. Okay. Some of the stuff we could actually get. You know, if we get, you know, again, you could work. And uh, it's just a thought, but like if you had a uh, pickup truck in there, you could get out. You could stand on top of the. Bed of the pickup truck, and you could reach up higher hmm. to get some of that you know, right. vines or whatever. Um, okay, so looks like um, now. let's move on. We have a schedule for um, November 17th. Town Forest uh, put clean up a little of the trails and put some posts down and with some signs from uh, 9 to 1. Volunteers are always welcome to come out and help us out in the community, and we would appreciate that. So we're going to move on. And the Next is to uh, vote on a warrant article to increase membership from five to seven. I know uh, Mr. Gagnon had put that together. If you want to present that, and we can discuss it. Sure. So I put some together some preliminary um, wording, sent it into the town, had it readjusted. So the, the final wording, if we were to vote, would be as follows. Uh, shall the town vote to increase the current membership of the Conservation Commission from five members to seven members as permitted by RSA 36A colon three? Mm -hmm. Simple and sweet. Uh, discussion, Mr. Collins. Uh, I'll, I'll start. Motion to. I'll, I'll start. Just to yes. Sir. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Let's not have a long, drawn-out conversation about this. I agree with the the premise behind it, and let the town's uh, people decide on whether or not we go from five to seven or keep it at five. So I make a motion to accept Mr. Gagnon's authored uh, writing of a warrant article and. We can put it before the voters. Who would second that? Okay. Uh, let's have a discussion. I'm not in favor of it. And the reason being is that I, we had some issues in this committee with seven, and it was very difficult at the time to be working with seven people. I think having five is a better way to go. It's, it's easier to maintain. It's easier to manage. Um, I think that... Um, having so many because if you have seven then you're going to have two alternates okay and having all of that i know some of you think that it will be great to have more people bring on give them more, more responsibility we can get more done that's not always true sometimes when you have so many people you caught you have you're crossing a lot of hairs and sometimes things don't get done it becomes more difficult I think the five that we have and the five in the future would be work better for this Conservation Commission. I'd rather see us try and work with five for the next year and see how it works. You know, we've worked for seven, and this past year was very difficult. Since it's been down to five, we've gotten a lot more accomplished. We've worked more well together, and we're on the same page. And that's the way I look at it. You know, adding two more people... Um, we've seen how it worked in the past. It was very difficult. You know, I'm not in favor of it. Go ahead, Mr. Gagnon. Um, you mentioned something about alternates. So I think just to clarify as well, if we had five members, we, we would still have two, two alternates. alternates and you had seven. And if we had seven members, we would also have two alternates. And you have open. nine. Sure, okay. okay. We're just putting that out there. And then the other comment I had listening to you talk is, you know, I, I see your point. Um, 
But actually, as, as a prime example, our last meeting, we only had three members and we were sitting here wondering, uh oh, would we even have three? So we got to be a little careful about what con um, what makes a um, a quorum. A quorum. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, so think of it this way. If you had seven and there was three here, you wouldn't have a quorum. Correct. You needed a four. You wouldn't have a quorum. You wouldn't need a four. Touche. You know? Anybody else? Mr. Collins. Uh, I, I respect your opinion, yeah. uh, but we have worked with seven members on the commission in prior instances uh, with success. Uh, many hands make light work to some degree. Uh, and it's hard because it's a volunteer-based organization, right? We're, we're all volunteers. Um, you don't know what you're gonna get in terms of personalities serving on any board. Right. Uh, but I, I don't see an issue with seven people serving on the commission. I, I think there's a lot of good people in this community uh, that wanna hold a full position, a full membership, uh, to add value to their to their meeting or to this meeting in general, and uh, I think we should allow that to to happen. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, I know I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, um, I'd rather see us go through the year next year with five members and see how it works out, and then whoever the chair is the following year wants to change it from five to seven. I'm fine with that. You know. I mean, I think um, at five, it would work best. Gills, uh, Mr. Collins. There might actually be a, a good compromise because sure. I don't expect us to actually fill these seats right away. So we could possibly get seven seats open. doesn't mean they're going to get filled instantly. So we very well could have your scenario where we might just have five next year because right. the seats won't be instantly filled. Well, one of the things that you guys um, are probably not aware of, when I took over the beginning of the year, um, um, Mr. Moran had sent me an email and asking me, so the next two people will come in, they're going to have some, they're going to be brought on board, whoever they, whoever the selectmen decide to bring on, give me a minute, um, um, it's going to go through them first, but when they come on board, just to kind of answer some of your questions and thoughts, they're going to come up to speed, they're going to know what RSA is to read at, they're going to know what project that we're going to be doing, they're going to be knowing what we've done in the past and stuff like that. So um, I haven't sent everything over, but I sent a small preliminary report over to uh, Mr. Moran about what we would like to see new members come on board, okay? Um, I still gonna go back um, and say I'd rather work with five, you know? Um, if the voters decide to bring it to seven or if, or if I get overruled here, um, I'm fine, you know? Uh, I'm just stating why I feel five is better. Uh, Mr. Collins. Uh, and this this goes back uh, again, not to browbeat this to death, but uh, initially we did not have bylaws to to kind of abide by, and new members uh, being appointed by the board of selectmen should have in their hands when they are appointed a a, a list package. of the bylaws, a package, and have a package, and and have a clear understanding of how the process works. Right, and if you know. Now that we've had have this established, it, it's an easier process because people will have the knowledge to know not not to do certain things and to do certain things. Right. You know. So uh, that's why I I don't see seven members as being an issue. Uh, you you pointed out um, we we have a lot going on. I mean, it's nice to delegate to other right. people certain things to to get done. We, when we had seven members, we had. Uh, one individual getting sign quotes. We had another individual doing this. You know what I mean? It, it was just, it made it a, a, a pretty smooth uh, a meeting flow, you know? Well, so. And we never, had, and out of all the years that I've been on the Conservation Commission, we've only had to cancel the meeting one time for a lack of a quorum. I was here for I, that. I think it was, uh, I don't, yeah, I, I won't, I don't know who was here and who wasn't. I know I was sitting in the room when it got canceled, but you know, that was the only time in the five, six, seven years. And we had, how long I've been on it. when I came on as a, a member, mm -hmm. um, that's seven years ago, eight years ago, yeah. that's what, right around there, f seats weren't being filled. We didn't know, you're right, there was always seven members, but no one wanted to be on the Conservation Commission at that time. Right. There everybody was probably else. four or five. Everybody wants you know? to And everyone wants to be on it now, right. So this goes back to your quorum question is that, we have seven and, and only f three show up. 
it's not a porn. I, I understand, but like I, I and I just pointed it out. Out of all the years I've been on here, the only time we've ever had to cancel a meeting right. was that one time, and yeah. that was, I believe, uh, in. I don't even want to go down. I, right, I know right, what time right. of year it was right. and uh, what was happening at that time. So, I again, I, I don't see any issue with having a seven-member seven board. I, I think we can still get a lot accomplished. New members will be versed uh, well, that's a, that's, as, that's, as they are appointed right. as to the bylaws of the Conservation Commission. And, uh, you know. Right. You're right. It, when won't be, it won't be as much of an issue as it was in prior cases. Right, because they will have a package. When when a new member is voted in, whoever they are, they'll have a package. Mm -hmm. you know. And I'll sit down with them before before the, before a meeting to go over some things. You yeah. know, I, mean, I don't have a problem with that. Right. You know? um, There's a motion on the floor, sir. Yeah. Um, uh, a, does someone make a motion? I think I'll... I made the motion to accept right, the Right, and there was second. Uh, second. So <coughs> any more discussion? Uh, about the motion all those in favor um, in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. aye aye all those opposed I oppose <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, lose I, anyways yeah yeah no I was gonna say I, I think uh, uh, you I, for I, or against doesn't matter I have competing thoughts about it but I I, I, I see your point there yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I would say I I was looking um, I think I'm going to vote in favor and the reason being is because in the past we did have seven members, and we it would Mr. help. Mr. Chairman, in, yep. yes, not to take away from his time, but the vote's done. He should have said right. this under discussion. Right, right. So right. yeah, that vote's over. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, so. I, 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 I meant to just say I'm voting in favor, not. Okay, so it's four to one. Four, four to one is the vote. Right. So this will. Mr. Gagnon, will you write up the Warren article and we'll submit it to the uh, uh, Board of Selectmen as we need it and sure. then go to the town. <coughs> All right. Certainly. Um, let's go to um, financial status. Everyone has seen their financial report. We just spent uh, $1,600 at the moment. Um, this year we'll do better at when we go to spend money trying to figure out what the funds are all right because we haven't done that in the past all right hey. um, uh, mr. chair yes mr. Gagnon uh, oh mr. Dickerson I'm sorry sir yeah I did have one question about sure. the financial report and then maybe you gotta look into this but for the, the first line I am purchased property it's saying that we we expended Three hundred ninety-one thousand and change, but then on the next page, it says it's saying four hundred forty. So what's? I saw that. And <laughs> so I, something to look I have into. To, I have to spot, talk to Kathy about that. So I'll talk to her tomorrow. The numbers because he had a ten thousand. And that should have came out of here, ten thousand. So it should be just four hundred thousand. So I have to go find out what the other forty thousand are from. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, we talked in our last meeting about the uh, monies earned from the forest, from the harvest, tree harvest at the town forest, and uh, that was supposed to be a separate account. Uh, it, will that show up at the beginning? of the next fiscal year yes. or will that be added to this no. existing next spread? fiscal year it it's not going to be added into our accounts it's going to no. show up as a separate account it's going to come up with their own conservation fund account forestry account right? forestry account number and maybe you went over yes mr. Dickerson so professional services is only two thousand one hundred change two thousand but we had uh, the the treatment um, of Robinson Pond that was 15,000 back on September 13th maybe mm -hmm. yeah and I'm wondering if that number is incorporated it's not reflected yet not probably reflected yeah yet. okay that's why I, I thought I was just thinking about that one out loud mm -hmm. yeah probably hasn't been captured yeah. yet okay um, let's move on to why is correspondence before 
10 minutes. I'll go to correspondence. All right. So you, um, I know Ms. Parkhurst had asked in the beginning of the meeting about the, uh, there's a um, NHACC 49th annual meeting and conference on Saturday, November 2nd, 2019. You can do registration online. Um, the New Hampshire Conservation of Commissions will be there. Um, it's, what was the price of it? It's $60. $60. Um, that is refundable by the town. They'll pay for that. I uh, can't do any overnights or anything there. The town won't pay for that. All right. Um, Mr. Gagnon, are you going? Uh, yes, sir. I believe myself and I believe Mr. Dickinson are going. Uh, and for the record, if anyone else is interested, obviously I highly recommend it. I've been twice now. It's phenomenal. Um, it's better to not put it on your personal credit card. Uh, Dorena can actually put a PO in for it. It makes it a little bit easier financially, just mm -hmm. for people to know. Um, just to let everyone know, when when we come into the meetings, this folder is always up at that table up there. You're always welcome to look at it um, and review it anytime you want, all right? And then um, Ms. Strickland in the morning comes down and, and gets this. Um, there's a booklet in here, Trails for People and Wildlife, um, a guide to planting trails that allow people to enjoy nature and wildlife uh, to thrive. So is, this is a nice little booklet looking at trails and how trails are made and how the greens are done and all that good stuff. All right. So you're welcome to look at this at the end of the meeting. You know. <clears throat> all right. That's afterwards. All right, next is uh, the minutes. Has everyone looked at the minutes? Yes. All right. Let's go to. Um, Motion to accept. <laughs> well, there's two of them here, okay? Yeah, both. Yeah. Let's do the September 2009, 2019. Um, how can I tell? There's two of them here. Well, one, one's non-public and one's public. So it's yep. just broken Do the up. one uh, that's yeah. public. All right. Has everyone looked them over? Anyone have any questions about that one? Motion to approve the minutes of September 9th. Uh, I'll second it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any uh, any discussions? Any disagree? Okay, let's move on to non-public. Um, yeah, motion to approve the non-public session. I second it. Any questions? Any concerns? Take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those in favor. No. All right. So that is. We'll do commissioners' comments. Um, keep it brief. Um, start with uh, Mr. Collins. Uh, Jesus, I had some, but no, I, it eludes me. No, I have no comments right now. Thank you. Ms. Parkers? Um, just, I always like to relay, like, feedback I hear, and um, one, of, um, one of the comments I heard last time I got together with the community on the conservation land was um, they wanted to, um, they wanted information to be more public, um, just in terms of cleanup days and things like that, so... Um, you know, I said I'd bring that to the commission and let you guys um, know about that interest that they have. They said, geez, if I knew, I would totally, you know, show up here on one of these days and help you out. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I, I just put that out there. I think it'd be nice to contact Lisa every time we agree on a day and just get it up on the website for the town. Most people tell me that Facebook is the live all be all of their scheduling. Um, so it'd be nice to do that. That way we can get that out there. And that's just my kind of comment today. Okay, I'll take note of that. Yeah. Um, Mr. Dickerson? Yeah, um, well, well, by the way, the, the last cleanup day was on the website, so that was good. Okay. Um, and it'd be good to continue that. So um, the other uh, thing was, uh, how many, I look forward to the conference on the second, so. Yeah. And look forward to getting these other projects done too. It's great that the scout showed up to do the wooden mm. drive bridges, or lack of a better term, that's the only way to do it. Okay. Mr. Moore, do you have any questions or comments? They uh, discussed your budget the other night at the uh, budget review. The chairman was there. There was a little bit of discussion, but everything went through. All right. Thank Thanks. you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Governor uh, Sherry. Mr. Gagnon. Um, so I guess uh, the only thing I had was to, to let the viewers know at home that we are actually looking for new parcels of land around town to purchase. Um, we've been sending out letters to landowners uh, 
noting that intent. If anyone listening would be interested in just talking to us or asking questions, please feel free to come in or contact the town. We'd love to get in touch with you. Okay. Um, Mr. Demers. Did, uh, <coughs> I don't know if you noticed or not, you did receive an email about someone interested in. Yes, in we can discuss that in a little bit. Okay, okay excellent. So, um, um, yeah, it's in the public. Um, I want to say uh, thank you for all coming. I want to say thank you for all everyone's input and your hard work. Um, to the public and everyone out there in the town of Hudson, please come by um, this Saturday at 68 Pelham Road for our river cutting and. Um, I hope to see you all there. Thank uh, you. Great prizes. Great prizes? No. <laughs> <They'll be great. laughs> no. No. <laughs> Bring an umbrella, maybe. That's about it. <laughs> um, so with that, we're going to go into non-public. You have to read the... He's going to read it. Oh, so oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. He likes to do that. So we'll be entering into non-public session uh, per RSA 91A3 uh, sub 2D, uh, consideration and acquisition of sale or lease of real or personal property, which if discussed in public would likely benefit a party or parties whose interests are adverse to those of the general community. Uh, the Commission may also go into non-public for any other reasons subject matter to RSA 91A32. With that, we will take a vote. Ms. Parkers? I vote in favor. You guys don't vote, right? Nope. Yeah. Myself in favor. Yep. Mr. Gagnon? In favor. Mr. Dickerson? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Okay. Kill the feed. All right. I killed the feed, right? <laughs>